In this final episode, we'll be doing a lot of the finishing touches, like installing the casters, the different drawer systems, and finally installing the MFT. Now I can move on to the sanding, where I'm gonna get rid of some of these pencil marks, and also some of the glue residue that was left behind. To do that, I'll be using the ETSC 125, as well as the edge guide, which will turn this into an edge sander to get some of this top edge banding. So with the majority of the large flat spots sanded, now I gotta work on these narrow face frames. I could do it just with the ETS-125 by itself. It's a chance of it rocking. So I'm gonna add the edge guide to it to keep it nice and flat and square. To change that out, I'll just be using a five millimeter wrench, which is included with most of our saws, to take a couple screws out and attach it. I can just adjust it to whatever angle I wanna sand at, which is 90 degrees for this, lock it down, then sand all my narrow face frames. If you have more questions about the sander or the edge guide, check out the link in the description. So with the sanding complete, we can move on to installing the casters. It's a fairly straightforward process, but I like to make it even simpler. Rather than measuring for where each caster goes, all four holes in each caster, I just made a jig. Uh, I'm doing an inch and a half offset from the front and the side, drill my four holes, move to the next one, drill my four holes. That takes any chance of air out of the picture. I went ahead and tipped the whole cart on its side. This way I can reach all the different casters from one location. So now I can get them installed and secured. So I had some help with putting the cart on the ground after the casters were installed. Now with it down here, I can finish sanding this top and then I can put the MFT up there. So now I've got the MFT on top of the cart. I wanna make sure that it doesn't move while it's on top of the cart. So I've cut some little blocks that I'll put where each foot is at and that'll lock it into place and I'll put it right where it's gonna touch the foot of the MFT, draw a couple lines, I'll take the table off, glue and nail it into place. So as far as the storage goes on my rolling workstation, I'm gonna be utilizing our sustainer system. And in that, we have both the L-size T-lock sustainers as well as the standard T-lock sustainers. For the standard T-lock sustainers, I can use the SysAZ drawers. And that comes with the drawer slides already installed, comes with instructions on how to install it, as well as the screws. For the L size, we're gonna be using the sustainer guide rails. And those just go on like that. You have to provide your own screws, but it also comes with a set of instructions on the dimensions you need to build your storage case for. These will work with any of the SysGen 3 sustainers. So I'm gonna start over here because this is one of the areas I designed for the SysAZ drawers. And then I'll go around the entire cart and install the lowest drawer first, and then I can design it however I want depending on the size sustainer that I'm gonna be using. For the SysGen 3 rails, I'm just using PosiDrive 5mm Euro screws to install.
For now, I'm just gonna store my TSC in there. I'm not gonna put any drawers in there. Down the road, I may have some ideas of what I can build to fit in there. If I do end up putting rails, I've got the holes pre-drilled. So with this complete, I now have a central location for tool storage, assembly, cutting, that's all mobile. And as I build out my shop, I'll be able to maneuver this where I need it the most. I built it the same height as my Capex UG stand. It'll also be the same height as my cabinets and countertops that I'm putting in. That way it helps the efficiency throughout the shop. Now you can see what I had in mind when I was cutting these mortises for these material supports early on in the project. In a small shop like this, this little additional design will really add to the versatility of this cart. Now I can see what this little drop down was for, the Vaxxus. I can store it here, I can use it here, and it stays out of the way of the MFT and any material that might be on top of it. I'll also be storing the vacuum pump back here on a SysAZ drawer so I can access that whenever I need to. Thanks for watching this build series. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a couple things along the way. Now I've got a lot of projects planned, so if you'll excuse me, I've got a shop to build.